Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lead Up Live Worker podcast, bringing you fun and soulful interviews with spiritual teachers with the aim of tuning you in and lighting you up. You can access all episodes of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and interviews all about spirituality and wellness. My name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher, intuitive, the co-creator of Elemental Healing, the author of Be the Guru and the number one best-selling life workers gotta work. And today it is my pleasure to have here with me Hannah Wallace. Hannah is a writer, podcaster, and speaker who through adversity has found grace in her life. She now guides others to do so by helping them to integrate their darkness and light and find grace from whatever space they are in. Hannah, welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast. Hey, George. So happy to be here. It is so exciting to have you here. And we're talking about a very important topic today, which is all about finding hope in times of uncertainty and maintaining that hope through even when um, things around us seem to be unknown and they are constantly changing. But before we dive into like tools and processes that people can use to find that within their lives, I want to hear about your story and what got you into your spiritual path. Um, So, I mean, I would say, even before what what had actually happened to me, um, I said to you before, actually, around the age of 12, I was really into like yoga and I was known amongst friends as the hippie girl. I would be rubbing pressure points on people's bodies if they had bad period pain in the middle of classrooms. Yes, that was me. Mm -hmm. Um, Drinking chamomile tea in the cafeteria. So I was was known as a bit weird, but very accepted because I, I, you know, I was very regular at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And then around the age of 17, I hadn't been listening to my body. I'd been overdoing it because I'd lived a very full life. Um, And it wasn't that I really wasn't looking after myself. I was just doing too much. That's the bottom line of it. And I became very unwell at the time with a very, very bad version of glandular fever and kind of very complex where it affected my liver, my spleen. You know, it went, it just went systemic. But what happened was that it floored me to the point where for about three or four months, I did not basically leave the house, leave the bedroom barely, just, you know, to really wash, eat, kind of, you know, survive, basically. And it sent me into a space of shock for the, for the first, uh, you know, period of time. I, I couldn't even really cry during that time because I, I couldn't even comprehend what had happened. And little by little, with the help of my mum, who basically thought, what the hell has happened to my daughter, who you know, she was trying to stop me going illegal underage clubbing and drinking, but I think she was thinking, come back, <laughs> Rebel Hannah. Um, she and I took some action and started to go down the alternative therapy route because I said to her, you know, doctors were offering me nothing at the time. They were just saying, we, you know, this happens to some people. It, you know, it wasn't a case of not believing, which I know often some people get. They were like, something's going on with your body. We don't really understand it. And I thought, well, this surely can't be the answer. So I sought out an acupuncturist who set me off on the journey on my alternative therapy um, um, mission to try and find a solution. And it did kind of give me a bit of a boost, get me back on my feet. And during this time, I started to obviously open up to more books. Um, But the, the teenage part of me that was only 17 at the time was like, I just want to get back to real life and be with my friends and be normal. Um, So... I tried to go back to school and I did um, and insisted on it and ignored everybody while at the same time spiritually awakening, getting very depressed, doing alternative therapies and trying to be normal, (laughs) which I think as we would both agree, something's going to have to give there eventually. It's a lot. Uh, It's a lot. It's too much. And the depression actually became very dark on me and I think what happened was and I think this would happen to anybody who goes through a situation often when we're in the midst of any situation we have to cope we have to survive it's only after when we start letting go you know allowing to live life more that trauma kicks in so I think what I was actually experiencing was trauma as much as depression um but I was obviously trying to counteract this with you know with trying meditation at this point hypnotherapy adding more stuff in and I wasn't really getting answers, but eventually I got so sick again, I had to quit life, shall we say. And 
I walked out of a doctor's surgery at the age of like 18, 19 to be told you, we don't know what to do with you. We're really sorry. That's, that's kind of it. We'll send you to a specialist to try and get some answers who tried to give me answers at the time I was presenting even more symptoms and thinking, this is crazy. I'm doing everything I can to help myself right now. And even they could see that. And again, not many answers said, oh, you've got chronic fatigue syndrome. It's rubbish for some people. You just need to learn to cope. And some people never get better. And, you know, it was very gloomful. And this was 20 years ago. So no one was really even open spiritual. Spirituality was still very much... Uh, you would know that it's it just wasn't really it wasn't mainstream it was just like just starting to like uh, open up to more people it was a subculture yeah. in many countries so by that point so it started with a granular fever then um by, by up to that point basically for for years you didn't know what you had yeah. and you had to live off of this uncertainty so I... and and it sent you down like even more like deeper state of depression and and trauma and just feeling like um, helpless in a way, wasn't it? Absolutely. And it was about the age of 21 that the depression just, I seemed to nail it. I, should we say, go and do a new therapy, thinking mm. I'd nailed it, then it would come back. And what I hadn't realized during that time, I was seeking the answers outside of myself. Hmm. So I woke up one day and I, you know, truth was, I felt like I didn't want to be here anymore. And I felt very disconnected from, you know, I felt sad that I couldn't do what I wanted to do with my friends. And I thought, what can I do here? And I thought, well, if I can fix my body, I can fix my mind. And I've been reading quite a lot of the older Hay House books. And I thought, I have a chance here. So that was when I, that, that simple choice started to change my life. Because I realized that if I could control my mind and learn to become at peace in my mind, then I could maybe change the game here, no matter what mm. was going on. And I discovered at the same time Conversations with God. And that book allowed me to stop trying to almost, with, a, with some of the spiritual books, there were very much tools, answers. Whereas this was more of a letting go, a dialogue with spirit, a dialogue with something without needing to know all the answers. And that really shifted it for me to allow me to sit back a bit. And obviously carrying on till I actually found out 10 years on what was actually wrong with me and it was weird because it felt at the time quite counterintuitive when I finally found what out what was wrong with me because some of the spiritual things I was reading were very much like let go of labels but actually that was quite important to know because it was able for me to take control back and realize what I could actually do to help myself and kind of recover some of the damage not that had been done deliberately because I'd been prepared to try anything. I was open to anything. So mm -hmm. I didn't know what was wrong. So I was before, before we go to the diagnosis, I want to, I want to stick to a point that you mentioned that I think is so important because um, when you realize that you were searching for answers outside of yourself rather than inside of yourself. And I feel so many people will relate to this because yes, not everybody deals with a chronic disease, but we all deal with uncertainty with yeah. situations that are not positive, And we are, we were taught in this world that the only way to find solutions is to, again, search them outside of ourselves, search for a drug or search for a, for okay. like, like any exterior like substance or, or tool or process or person or situation or, or country or place that yeah. will give us the happiness that we know is within us. So basically yeah. your adversity, like urged you and brought you to a point where all you had to do or, or all you could do really yeah. was surrender and just turn within and remember who you really are. Yeah. That is so powerful. Yeah. And stop fighting. And don't get me wrong. I would have periods after that, that point where I'd find myself slipping back into those old habits. And I'd say it took probably my twenties to really break those habits of as soon as something would come up that I felt I needed to get control of, I would have to instantly look for a solution. I know you can relate to this because we're yeah. very much like solution based. You know, the truth was if someone had told me to eat poo, I would have eaten poo. And it sounds extreme, but it was that much of an urge inside of me. And I also think that what I was chasing was I was chasing something that wasn't even real anyway. I was creating these stories that when I would say, say I'd read an inspirational book 
and say someone had done something to kind of really help themselves and they had an amazing result, I would base that on my outcome. That was where I needed to be. And if that didn't happen to me, I was doing something wrong. Uh. So it was me having to come back on that journey of self-worth, remembering that all of our journeys are different, remembering that stop trying to make your life look like another's. And it's, and it's understandable, and I'm sure anyone listening can relate, that once we're down the rabbit hole, we are looking outside of us. And if we see people thriving and maybe that they have magically sorted something out, but that's their path. And it's that's like the shadow side of, uh, of self-help books sometimes, yeah. because we, we read all these amazing stories, people healing cancer, with their, yeah. the, the power of their thoughts. And then we start comparing ourselves. If we don't manage to experience similar results, which are, as you said, every single person has a, an entirely different journey, different lessons we came here to learn. Yeah, and actually, I'm really grateful along the way for what I call more kind of psychic, more the more kind of deeply spiritual stuff that I went to that explained to me that we have lessons, we have karmic contracts, we have so many things that are at play here, Hannah, beyond our human control. And that actually, you know, I uh, the, the, the human part of me was suspicious of that, of course. And then I would look and I think, well what did I do? You know, and then a part of you wants to blame yourself. What did I do wrong that I didn't? So it was breaking down all those layers. And when you say about affirmations and stuff, I remember one point having affirmations stuck on post-it notes Me too. over my wall. And it was quite liberating when I took them down because it, 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 I, I needed to remember the affirmation was within me. Yes. And even now I love to sometimes if I need to remember something, but it's remembering to come back to myself. And I think throughout that whole journey, and I'm not saying things didn't help because I credit many things that, you know, certainly helped me along the way. And I'm sure 100% you know, all of those things have played a part in kind of assisting me. But I think it's also me remembering that it was actually that coming back to myself, which was the biggest healer um. of everything. And also letting go that I could show up as me and be accepted as me as I am now. And that people aren't going to judge me. The judgment and comparison was coming from myself. It wasn't coming from the outside. And I think, yes, people do judge, but very much of the time it comes from ourselves and we don't it's mirroring know. yeah it's mirroring and it's, it's so um it's so important to remember in the spiritual community because we have all these tools like affirmations and mudras and meditations like all the spiritual entertainment that i sometimes like to call it and sometimes again it, it becomes something we depend on as well mm -hmm. and we try and find all the solutions in the spiritual books in those affirmations rather than remembering that we, we came with all the tools that we need to be able to find alignment, which is our own beingness, our own body, yeah. our own connection um, to source. There was a time, Hannah, when I, I found myself also depending on spiritual teachers and I realized, oh my God, I stopped depending on other people and I started depending on other teachers and other teachings uh, for my own connection. So I did, uh, I did take like, a spiritual teacher detox. <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> where I stopped myself from like reading or following anyone just to like come into my own power. Now I want to move into the diagnosis. So fast forward to the time when, and tell us a story actually of, of how it actually happened. Well, my mate Tim on Facebook, who, who actually is the most unspiritual, opposite to spirituality. In fact, thought I was batshit, as he used to say, you and your, you know, stuff. However, he, you know, he said, do what you want to do. But I think that you might have, have this particular thing wrong with you. And I was like, you may be right, but how do I go to a, to a doctor and be like, my mate Tim on Facebook says I've got this because we all know the kind of Google nature we live in. Um, and it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. Sometimes we're all going to Google something that's <laughs> it's wrong with us, etc. But I thought, do you know what? It, this has been a long road. If this is an answer, this isn't about me holding on to a label. This could be empowering for me because actually I'd done a lot of kind of label dropping. I'd done all the kind of stuff around that. This I knew this was something different and I felt very guided as well. I felt like I, the truth is I felt like spirit was behind me. And the way it played out was that I really do believe that, that I went to the doctor and I went in with kind of this like slight fear base. She said, uh, Googled it herself and said, I think your friend's right. 
And she then said that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, because she'd been this whole journey with me. Um, and so she fast forwarded me um, to go to the hospital. And even when I went down to the hospital, I thought I could override the machines because I thought, oh, wow, well, you know, let's give it my best <laughs> shot. So even when I passed out on when I was wired up to all these machines, they actually informed me they could see that I'd been trying to obviously mentally fight against what was going on. They then said, you definitely have this wrong where you were going to send you to a consultant mm. who I, I turned up at a consultant who the truth is I prayed to the angels in the universe because I didn't want to deal with a kind of patriarchal difficult person and I said please bring me somebody that even if he doesn't he's not into what I'm into that this is this is going to help me and and the universe delivered that and delivered an amazing man who is very supportive and he actually took one look at my medical notes and said there's been a massive mistake here you've actually got this this other thing you've got which the, is the Ellis Donald's Ellers Danlos syndrome. So, can you explain a little bit what it's all about? So that because I don't, I don't think many people are aware of it. So, I, I think awareness is important at this point. So, it is yeah. the Ellers Danlos syndrome. So, in my case, it travels down my mother line, and a few people in my family have got it. My mum and sisters are carriers, but they don't have it. Um, and basically, it's my body is a bit alien really it makes too much collagen which was why all those years ago when I thought I was an amazing yoga expert that I was so bendy but obviously that bendiness started to become a problem because my joints started to black from dislocate I started to have internal problems where things were I would say go and do a therapy and even some of the therapists would be saying I don't really quite understand your body it's different even your skin's different my skin is very velvety um and so it's a it's a systematic thing and there's six different subtypes and they all affect differently so yeah so he sent me to a geneticist and during that time what, what did interest me was that when he sent me to this geneticist when i walked into the genetic counselor they wanted to know why i wasn't so terribly messed up which of course i'm not going to say i was over the moon by the whole situation but i said well you know because i've tried to help myself and you know, one thing I do realize why awareness is important and why we do need to encourage people within any community to help themselves, that people have gone 10 years without trying to really do anything for themselves and that they're so messed up mentally by the time, take away any physical treatments, but people helping people to heal their minds alone, that people are going in there messed up. So I am really grateful, obviously, that I was able to walk in there you know, I did cry when I walked out of that room, but a lot of it was relief. I felt like I almost thanked God essentially because I was like, Do you know what? I felt like I'd come to the end of the road and it sounds a really crazy thing, but from that point, my life did change because I was able to take control back. I had questioned my sanity over the years. I thought, am I mad? Am I making this up? Because especially when you'd read certain things and you think, am I, am I just manifesting this? Am I am I creating this problem? And I knew I was kind of living when I got in there and he saw how severe it kind of should have been. He did say to me, whatever you've been doing has helped. And that was like, for my ego, a little bit of affirmation. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but it was a relief and it changed things for me because I think I could relax in the sense that I still had uncertainty because it's there and I have to learn to live with it. But I was able to kind of work with that uncertainty and know the tools that I could apply and also let go a bit. And I think at that point I was able to let go. Yeah, it, it sounds like um, you, you had been resisting it for so long. And then when you finally through your spiritual journey have learned the tools to let go and surrender the solution, yeah. like revealed itself to you. It was always there, but it yeah. couldn't show up because you were resisting it. So what would you say? is the number one tool that you feel has helped you the most through this journey to just keep saying and to keep going and to not lose hope and to keep having dreams and keep on living? Well, I thought about this when, when we, we talked about this and it's quite hard because I think there's a few things, but probably meditation hmm. and using meditation as a way to empower yourself and using it in a way to let go and not trying to control things but also the crazy thing what i would say the other number one tool would be to let go and have some fun because much of the time in those early years 
there was a part of me that was afraid to have fun because I thought, well, if people didn't see me trying to help myself, they would judge me if I was out seen having fun. I want to tell everybody, joy, happiness, fun, the vibration of those things are healing, are soul warming, are actually what makes all of the difference to our wellness and our well-being. So whatever is going on in your life, make sure that you are taking your hands off the wheel. You're not trying to control it. And you are not, you're not just doing the things you should be doing that when you're having that fun, and I know you'd relate to this, it's unrelated to that other stuff. 100%, like taken from a perfectionist such as me, which would like to control everything. Um, like when you're, when you're brought to a situation, and I'm guessing you are like very controlling as well, especially yeah. back then. When you, when you are in a situation where you no longer have control, where your body is controlling the situations, then you have to adjust. Yeah. And that was really hard for me because, I mean, growing up, I'd always like to be, you know, because I, I was very stretched. You know, I did piano practice. I then wanted to go out and I wanted to have the fun. Then I wanted to do my yoga practice. Then I wanted to do X theater. So I had all these things. So it was all very structured and scheduled. Not really, this wasn't coming from anyone else. This was all my decision to do this as well i mean my mum used to say to me slow down um but the truth is i believed i could have it all and the interesting thing was many years later i remember reading something that gabrielle bernstein said and it really hit home to me that you can have everything but not all at once yes and amen to that i, I always say that. that and it's so true and i say to anybody listening in uncertainty anyone who does maybe feel their life is uncertain even if your life feels that it's a part that there's nothing you can do, actually look at the things that you do have right now and look at those things and know that just because you don't have everything you want, actually having the things you've already got is, is more than enough. And the more you can lean into that and surrender into that, you will inevitably begin to li live your life within more alignment. But obviously easier said than done, I get it, but keep practicing it even if you have to repeat it to yourself. Oh my goodness, Hannah, you've given us such powerful lessons and tools uh, that we can all use to uh, find more hope in our lives, no matter the kind of uncertainty yeah. and the degrees of uncertainty we all have, because we all face like constantly at least a, a degree of uncertainty and we're trying to play God many times and trying to control situations and realizing that we are part of God as well. And yeah. uh, like being in this situation, is already taken care of. And if we vibe with whatever, however things are showing up, we're gonna be led to the solution like you were led to the solution as well. Any last message you wanna leave, uh, leave us with? I would like to say to anybody, remember that your being in your body is a vessel for spirit, God, source, whatever you want to do. And that when we block it up with all of those outside things and our control, what George said about playing God, the, the real solution here is the letting go, take your hands off the wheel. Remember that in order to let that work through you, you have to create that space. And no matter how hard it is, creating space in your life will inevitably create that shift that you need and often allow things to come in and unexpected things that you might not be looking for. Because sometimes where we think we're looking for the solution isn't always a solution. Even if X, Y, Z has said, I did this, it, change my life sometimes that's not going to work for you that's okay you're not doing anything wrong you're more than enough it's your journey it's your path live your life for you and what you said about my intro we can only begin to find grace when we when we do that the grace is already there she's there he's there he's there waiting and it's only when we begin to invite that grace in that we can truly become and align essentially that is so powerful. Hannah, thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? They can find me on Instagram at Hannah underscore Wallace one one. My website is www.hannah-wallace.com. And through my website, you can find my blog, my podcast, which you can listen directly through the website, but you can also find on iTunes and Spotify. And I do have a Facebook page as well, which I share as, as we all do. We all have a Facebook page. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where you can find me. 
And the podcast is really wonderful. It's called Finding Grace and it's mm. full of, of empowering stories such as Hannah's to help you. Um, I love you, George. Yes, I'm there as well. <laughs> people love, and people love George. You know, I had friends because we went quite spiritual in that. And I had friends who really aren't into that, that really loved listening to George's <laughs> story. So I'm glad. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us. Wishing you a love the rest of your day. My pleasure, George.